everyone, and welcome to Revenue Rescue. This monthly webinar series is brought to you by the team here at Affinitiv. For those of you just getting to know us, we provide marketing and software solutions to over 5,000 dealerships nationwide, working with every major manufacturer in the country. We're excited to take some time to share a bit of the knowledge and insight we've gained through our experiences. So each month, our Revenue Rescue webisode will feature a new topic addressing common challenges within your dealership <coughs> that may be leaving revenue on the table. In the end, our goal is really to guide you through solution and strategy ideas to help you make the best decisions possible for your business. So today, Courtney Evans, Definitive Vice President of Product Marketing, is going to continue the conversation about modernizing the owner retention program. So far, our episodes have taken you through the importance of rethinking your ORP strategy, how to make it more custom to your needs, and most recently, last month we explained how to improve the existing touch points already in place. And now, Courtney will discuss what comes next. After taking that hard look at your current strategy and its channels, how do you start connecting the dots between your owner retention program and the rest of your dealership's marketing plan? And with that, I will turn it over to Courtney. Thank you, Anne, and thank you to everyone for joining us today for another installment of Revenue Rescue. We hope that by the end of today, you walk away with some ideas to carry into your 2020 planning to help shape your marketing. As always, let's remember, it's your dealership, your goals, and your marketing. So over the past four months, we have really been talking about your retention program and how it truly serves as a backbone to all of your marketing strategies. A retention program is not only a great product to be utilizing, but it's also essential to getting your message communicated to your customers in a routine fashion. It's more than just a product, it's part of your strategy. For those of you who may be new or anyone that needs a refresher, we started the conversation on what an owner retention program was and how it's probably the single most used marketing tool in the automotive world, certainly the one that has been around the longest. But even though it's being used and has been around for a while, the strategies that worked in the past don't always work today, and they need to be rethought. So we continue the conversation to stress the importance of having a marketing strategy and then adapting your program around that. Retention programs are no longer that cookie-cutter program of the past. You must be using them to your advantage and have them work for your specific needs and goals. I've said it before and, you know, I, I hear it all the time. They're not this set it and forget it product that we once thought of them as, but something that really needs your constant attention and needs to be changed to meet the needs of your dealership. We've also modernized them to include further touch points, more data elements, and more channels, making them completely customizable to what you need and help to communicate to your customers no matter where they are. And finally, last month we discussed the ever important touch points and why you need to think outside of the box. Most programs will allow you to send a new car thank you, decline, service reminder, and many others. But have you really thought about what the consumer wants communicated to them and how frequently or when to? What the messaging is? If I buy a brand new expensive vehicle, am I really seeing the importance of just an email thank you? Or would that point be better conveyed through a Bible mailer with a detachable loyalty card that makes me feel like I'm an appreciated customer and truly part of the dealership's family? <clears throat> so let's get started on this. I think a big hot topic these days is customer experience and how it relates to sales and customer loyalty. It's definitely one of those top areas of investment for the coming new year, and for good reason, because those who do invest in customer experience will see an increase in revenue, sometimes double in just 36 months or less. Our customers mean everything to us, but how do we keep them? It's more than just price. We need to be thinking about how we elevate that experience and make it more convenient and enjoyable. 
Most people think of marketing and customer experience as two separate things. But aren't they really connected? Isn't your marketing coming from what we learn within the dealership and also helping to create an experience for customers even when they aren't in the walls of the dealership? 49% of people have made an impulse buy based on a more personalized experience. And marketing can help do that in or outside of the dealership. Remember, we always have to be communicating with our customers. Recently, Adobe did a study and found that businesses that have a strong omni-channel marketing strategy that plays into their customer engagement strategy, so meaning that they're one and the same, not two separate strategy, see a 10% year over year growth and 25% increase in sales close rates. This shows that your marketing is one of the same, is one and the same as your customer experience and needs to be thought of in the same strategy rather than separately. So hopefully throughout the last few months, you have learned to perfect the retention program you already have in place. I'm hopeful that you've made that call to your marketing partner and have started that conversation about what your 2020 goals are. And they're prepared to help you structure both your retention program and other marketing programs around that. They're ready to take what you need done and help you create the marketing around it. So today, let's discuss how your retention program is really fueling all of your marketing efforts, including the customer experience, and how we can elevate that for 2020. And this should help you see results and success as we enter 2020. We really want to think beyond ORP. Is ORP not as just another marketing tool or another product? We want to think of it all as connected and a thorough marketing strategy throughout. So currently, a lot of marketing is inconsistent. We enroll in products and consider them very separate and tend to differentiate them from one another. We don't think twice about signing up with a different marketing product from a different provider because, hey, they all have different results and have different goals and you know, serve different purposes. But that's where we're really wrong. Your marketing needs to be consistent. Use the same voice that a customer has become used to, connected to, and remembered. Our marketing is a form of communication that talks to our customers when we're not able to. No matter where they consume this or how they consume it, it needs to create the same customer experience, and one that sticks with them, makes them talk about it with their friends, and stands out above anyone else that stands as competitors. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty on how some of the products you might be using are really intersecting with your retention program. <clears throat> how do you, our overall marketing strategy tools intersect? So we've talked about it before. Data is everything and definitely a hot topic. In order to be successful with our marketing, we need to be using the data that we have at hand, but also incorporating some third party. Why is this? It gives you a better scope of each individual customer, your customer profiles, market analysis, and allows you to communicate better. Just using the data within your GMS is not going to help you with your ORP. We need to start looking more deep into each of our individual customers or prospects. Data should be incorporated with your retention program in order to help you communicate accurately and timely. It can also help you with the message that's used, that's used and when to start and stop communication. Nothing is worse than getting that service reminder at a six-month interval, but knowing that the customer was just in or has done something else previously or using the telematics data. Another way of utilizing the data that we receive back, the stuff that's coming from our customers. Who's using offers? Who's viewing your marketing? And also, what does CSI look like? There's no better data out there than the information about your customers or coming from the people that are actively using your services. 
So another product, you know, historically, you probably have enrolled in a Conquest solution or Conquest campaign that's not at all related to your retention program. They've pretty much been viewed as separate campaigns or different products within your marketing strategy. But why is that? Why can't you Conquest customers in for either service or sales, regardless if they're in your DMS or not? Isn't a return customer just as valuable as a new one? And isn't some of the data that we're taking from our retention programs and our customer habits helping us inform what they're due for or what their habits might form? Today, we can incorporate Conquest campaigns into the retention program and view them as a touch point within the program. This way, it can help with us, help us with future timing of other communications, and we can also ensure that the we're communicating accurate and timely information. Using data such as buyer's habits, life events, or even internet history, we can accurately guess when a customer may be ready to exit their existing cycle and start a new one, regardless if this is part of a sales or service conquest. So you've sent the reminder through your retention program and the customer is about to respond. They want to schedule the service follow-up. Mission accomplished. The hardest part is done. But are you using a scheduler that allows you to be connected with your retention program and ensure that what's communicated or what they see within that is communicating the same message, offer, and timing? Regardless of if the customer schedules online, or if they receive a call from the dealership or they personally call the dealer to schedule, having a schedule scheduler that is in conjunction with your retention program allows you to communicate and apply the same offers that they saw within your retention program, ensure the timeliness, and also communicate the relevance of the services needed. You can take some of the guesswork out and some of the you know things that the customer might not know and apply them ahead of time. So as soon as they put their name or account in, you know all of this. You can also record any customer concerns or things that they would like to have done during the service appointment and help in the communication process when they enter the dealership. Seeing exactly what they received in the form of a mailer, display ad, or email within the scheduler helps to create a consistent customer experience that helps the build trust with your customers. And in the end, this is all gonna to contribute to that ever important customer experience. So once the customer is, in, is within the dealership and their vehicle is in the service bay, integrating your service lane technology with your retention program can also help with that communication that we've been talking about, and which results in a better customer experience. Anything that happens during that service appointment can be communicated to everyone involved in touching the customer and ensure that the same message gets communicated. So what? It isn't a secret that a majority of people dislike that dealership experience. Some common trends that we hear is that they feel that they're being taken advantage of. And service lane technology can help solve this. But what if now, everything being reported to the customer as well as things being declined or taken care of are the same things that we, you know, put into the retention program. It's the same message that's conveyed. Now look, we look like we're taking the customer and the vehicle seriously and stressing the important point of thanking them for, you know, either taking an action or thanking them for already doing one. This plays into the customer experience and helps to merge the two products and also create that trust and reliability. So now when the time comes to communicate with your customer post-service or before service anyway, we also need to be think about how we are communicating and where our customers want to be communicated to. More than 80% of people are consuming media and marketing via digital channels. Digital is no longer an option or a nice to have. It's necessary to move forward in the market. It is also the easiest way to connect your marketing message. 
The retention program can be viewed via email, social, or video messaging. And it's an easy and efficient way to deliver a quick message to a customer. We've spoken about conquesting and processing in clients, and digital is a great way of doing that. They say it takes the average person seven times hearing a message before it clicks. Digital channels are a soft touch that it may not be overly invasive if a customer sees it multiple times. It also helps for better data back into your dealership. We can also use your website to find leads and, and then connect those to the retention program to start conquesting them into your dealership. Another great thing about digital it is easy to personalize and make relevant to that individual customer. Video email has been a big hit recently because now we can personalize it for the customer. They can see their you know, vehicle model, their name is being used, and they can actually get a glimpse of what the actual dealership experience will be like in the email. So at the end of the day, we need to stop thinking of our marketing strategy and marketing toolbox as that. We need to think of it as a means to elevate the customer experience. A customer wants a consistent and reliable experience, no matter where they are, what they've done in the past, or what the cost. We look to do three things, convert, experience, and retain. And these need to be considered no matter what marketing tool you're using. The owner retention program is at the heart of all this and helps us to move a customer from one stage to the next and connect all of our strategies into one. So to wrap it up, many of you are most likely already using a retention program. But when was the last time you reviewed it? When was the last time that you thought about how it connects to all of the other objectives that you have within your dealership? And when was the last time that you considered marketing and customer experience in the same strategy, let alone the same sentence? Hopefully all of this, and not just what we covered today, but what we've looked at over the past four months, has helped you to at least take the first steps towards rethinking your strategy for 2020. If you want to review anything discussed, please head over to the Affinitive website for recordings of all of our webinars. And make sure to remember, it's your dealership, your marketing, and your strategy. You have the ability to frame, you know, put your marketing at the heart of that. So as most of you know, Revenue Rescue airs monthly, and while they're all individual topics, they do build upon each other and form a story. Next month, we talk through the 2020 strategy plan and how your marketing falls into this. One of the biggest mistakes we're making is viewing sales, marketing, and customer experience as all separate topics, rather than one interconnected strategy. So next month, we'll take a deeper look into the evolving market and industry and try to help you strategize on a bigger strategy, one that encompasses all the things important to your dealership, revenue, and customers. And we hope that you join us. Thanks for joining us today, and let's continue the conversation. If there, you have any questions, please reach out to solutions at affinitive.com. And remember, you know, all of our webinars are available on our website. Thanks again, and we look forward to you joining us next time.